St. Beowit founded the community in the 6th century, and today in Monastir Bois attracts visitors from all over the world. The monastic site of Monastir Bois is situated 5 miles north of Drogheda, just after the N1. It dates back to the 6th century, when it was founded by the St. Beowit. Nothing remains of the original monastery, but there are remains of two 10th century churches. The remains consist of an old graveyard, two churches, three sculptured crosses, two early grave slabs and a sundial. The sundial was used to call the monks to prayer three times a day. And in particular interest here at this site would be the three crosses and the round tower. The cross nearest to the graveyard entrance is St. Muradoc's cross. It's an outstanding example of a high cross of early Christian period in Ireland. It stands approximately 17 feet in height. St. Muradoc's cross is widely regarded as the finest of its type in Ireland and possibly the world. The cross depicts Christ the King and there are also depictions on a of the Old and the New Testament of Adam and Eve, Cain slain Abel and the Last Day. It is said that the biblical inscriptions on these and, and, and de depicted that they were painted over the back in, in the day. There is no evidence of, a, of paint on, on, on any of the crosses ever found in history in Ireland. However, the myth is, and old legend is, that the monks would have them painted, the biblical characters painted for the colour, so that when they were given their sermons and teaching Christianity throughout Ireland, it was easier for the pagans to just look at the pictures and understand uh, what, what he was explaining to them. The West Cross, the tallest cross in Ireland, it's nearly seven metres high. As you can see by this photograph of me standing beside it, I'm five foot nine and I look very small towards it. There's an unusual and a very unusual crucifixion scene on this one, on the west face of the cross. It would be worth for you to pay a visit up and have a look at this yourself. There is a third cross and that's in the that's in the northern part in the corner and it's, there's a small railing around it. It's not as spectacular I suppose as, as the other crosses however still it is a high cross and it deserves that if you do visit to take a walk around and have a look at it. The south church is the older of the two and it still has the remains of the channel arch. The smaller church which is situated beside the round tower has no trace of its channel. The round tower itself stands 100, about 100 feet in height. It's now missing its upper part and the coincidental cap. The door is about 6 foot above the ground and this was to stop invaders from just walking in where the monks would and the abbots would go into the high tower, pull up the ladder, close the gates. And, and there's a modern flight of steps in here. Now this is closed to the public at the moment and I don't know when it's going to be opened but it would be fascinating to actually gain access and have a look around it. It is said that in the late 900s, around the 978 or there, thereabouts, during an attack by the Vikings that it was burnt and there was a lot of manuscripts burnt in the building itself. A lot of our history went up in smoke as the man would say and a lot of jewellery and diamonds and gold and stuff would have been pillaged by the Vikings. Now I hope you enjoyed the video. I tried to keep my videos under 5 minutes and I'm sorry I haven't posted uh, recently. Uh, however, if you're new to the channel please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. And thanks very much for watching. And don't forget, come over and visit us on our Facebook page. Thank you.